Praise the Lord, church. Are you, are you, everyone, thankful for what the Lord has done for you in your life? Are you thankful for what He's done to you? You both feel this morning. You know, our God is an awesome God. Perspective, 
I want you to speed read very quickly here in chapter 17 of Luke. And the Lord is speaking to his people. And he says here, I want to get to you to redeem the time. Let's go to verse, in verse 28. Likewise, in fact, verse 27. In fact, verse 26. And as in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Like was also as it was the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man shall be revealed. There will be a repeat. Mm -hmm. In that day, he which shall be upon the house of, and is stuffed in the house, they have not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. We're going to pray. Lord, how excellent is thy name in the tabernacle of praise church. How marvelous are your works in our midst, night and day. You have been the same today as you were yesterday. And we are thankful that you are our God. And we are your people, the sheep of your past. When you speak to us expressly, I pray this morning in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I am preaching to two congregations this morning. Those that are here and those that are not here. Those that are not here at my soul, repent for them. But you that are here, God bless you, you may be seated. My title is not a title that is pulpit around the world today. It was, in fact, it will never be used. I can predict that in prophecy it will never be used. Unless a strange John the Baptist showed up, or Elijah, or Michael the prophet. But today we're going to be facetious and use it. And my title is Warning to Backsliding. Mm -hmm. yes. I need it shout. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If I did say blessing is coming your way today, <laughs> yeah. you'll be on your feet. That's right. <laughs> but when I say warning to backsliding, you said on me. Come on. Well, that's all right. Your chairs are wired for electrocution. I will get you moving if I need it. I'll push the right button and you jump. So when I want you to move, I'll let you move. So when God get ready, you got to move. That's right. That's the Lord. Amen. I want you to notice here in the Bible that Jesus was not mincing words. He said, everything that I just read to you a while ago is going to happen. Not may happen. He said it's going to happen likewise. Does Jesus make mistakes? No, no. Are there any errors in the words of God? No. Does God come back and apologize for the mistake he made? No. He said my word shall not return void. He, and Paul says his word shall accomplish that which he purposed. And unbelief shall not deter. Now Jesus Christ predicted that he's coming back. Yes. No power or government or forces can prevent that reality. Yes. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now significant in your Bible, and all this week in the future I want to talk to you about prophetic word of the Lord, but when God starts an, an, an example in Genesis, he does not change it in Revelation. That's right. He maintained the law of repet repetition. The law of consistency. The law of first mention, second mention, third mention. That's why I know this church is right. Amen. We are baptized in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. It happened once, yes. twice, yes. three times. It's established. Yes. We know there's one God. Yes. Said it one time, yes. two times, three times. 
It has to change in other testaments. Right. And though we're right. Yes. And the Bible says he was in the world. And the world was made by him, not them. Yes. Was made by him. Yes. And Amen. the world knew him not. But he was the owner of this world. Yes. And there's a law of consistency. Because he said in Revelation, Behold, I make all things new. new. Yes. Now I'm going to borrow some people's Amen. building. I make all things new. So the law of consistency and the law of repetition is in the Bible. Now, the word backside is not used by most preachers. And I'll be honest with you, most preachers don't even dare use that word on any Sunday morning service. Because they did, I think they'll be fired or walked out on, whatever the case might be. And by the way, in case you walked out, i got a lot of angels here to listen to me. So I know that I have an unseen death among my people today. But the summary name for backsliding, it covers a whole pictorial of concept that we don't talk about. Number one, Jesus Christ and Paul wrote, and Peter, that before we come, I've got at least 14 things that can mention to you. When you add it all up, you give you one word for it all, is backsliding. Look at an example. You got Jehovah Tower, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sitkanu, and all the different Jehovahs. But when I say Jesus, I have said it all. Amen. Amen. One word, Jesus. Yes. I have named him all. Yes. I don't need Jehovah Tower, Jehovah Shalom, and all that stuff. They're good in their day. But I say Jesus, yes. and we're complete in yes. him. Amen. When I use the word backsliding, it simply means the aggregates of Falling away. Amen. Departing from the faith. Yes. Forsaken assembling of ourselves. It means going back on commitment with Jesus Christ. It means having loved this present world. It means turning our ears away from the truth. It means having a form of godliness amen. and denying the power thereof. Yes, it means changing the truth in a lot. It means going the way of Cain, Balaam, Korah, Jezebel, or it mean went out from us. Yes. Or it also mean faith thrown overboard and somebody gone shipwreck. Or it also mean many will not end your sound doctrine. Now, when you put all those together, yes. those descriptives, it comes under one word, backsliding. In Psalms 78, go to the very quick with me, please. Psalm 78. And verse 9 and 10, it tells you that Judah was not God's first choice through which Messiah should come through. God wanted to come through Joseph. Joseph is the guy who went through all the excursion that Jesus went through. Hated by the brother, sold by the brother, Amen. lied upon, right. exiled. Joseph was the only individual among the 12 tribes that went through all those events. So it was God's plan that Messiah should come through Joseph. But it never happened. And here is why it never happened. In verse 9, it says, The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying what bows, turned back in the days of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. And forgot his works, his wonders that he showed them. Now that's what backsliding is. And if you want more, you want more example of backsliding in, in reality in Israel's history, look at verse 17. Look at verse 18. Look at verse 19. Look at verse 22. <clears throat> look at verse 29. Look at verse 30. Look at verse 32. Look at verse 36 and 37. Time will love to read them, but I'm going to say verse 40, verse 42, verse 56, verse 57, verse 58, and finally God got mad in 67 verse and said, I'm going to choose Judah instead. Yes. <coughs> the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Let me tell you what it means. Those who first came to Pentecost may not survive the end of Pentecost. Right. And those who came in last might be the one that sit upon the throne right. and reign with him. Yeah. I'll tell you, every church around the world have the truth could tell you if all the converts 
that God had brought grace and salvation to and that repented and received the Holy Ghost were to stay faithful to God. There'll be no stadium big enough to hold them. That's right. I know if you heard me. There'll be no church big enough to hold what God started. But something happened and that word is called backsliding. Backsliding see means sliding backwards. Now you see what is God trying to tell us here? Let's try to read between the lines and on the line, if you would, please. And look at Luke chapter 6, 17, 31, 32. What is God trying to tell us here? God's trying to tell you, Lot was saved from the flames. Lot and his wife and his children were saved. God is telling you and me, we can be saved like Lot was. Yes, Amen. When Lot left, the storm came. In other words, God did not appoint Lot to wrath, Amen. but to obtain salvation. Right. And his family, because the angel said, do you have anybody else around here? Right. Bring them out because God is about to destroy this place. Right. They had foreknowledge. They have inside information right. that the neighbor didn't have. Yes. And God pull them out with the angel of mercy and grace and somehow bring them out of that city outside the place of destruction and put them in the place of safety. Amen. Now Jesus Christ made the mention that so will it be before he comes. Some people are going to escape the wrath that's coming upon our world because they are saved by his angelic power going to pull us out of the flames to come. Now here's what happened. The stage is set for us to understand what happened to Lot's wife. The Bible says and the angel told them run and don't look back. Amen. Amen. Once you're in the church don't look back. Amen. Once I bring you out don't go back. Amen. Once I pull you out don't dream of looking back. Amen. Don't go take nothing out. Run for your life. Don't even imagine what's happening behind you. Run for the city of refuge. And stay there because it's a day of vengeance and wrath. And the avenger blood is coming. Don't look back. Just keep on running. I'm going to tell you right now. You can't run a race and keep looking back. You will never win the race. You have to trip up. Yes. Anybody running looking back, we're gonna fall down. Right. Amen. Yes. And you don't the only time I know you can look backward and go forward is in the boat where you're rowing. <laughs> I don't know if any of the time. And God said, Don't look back. Now, here's Jesus Christ, he's assuming that you know the story. He said, Remember Lot's wife. Now, church, who is he talking to? Sinners? No. He's talking to saved people. He's trying to give you the, the incident. Go read the story. Yes. Go find out what that means. Because Lot was saved, therefore his wife was saved also. Right. Now, he didn't say she perished, but he left it to your imagination. Yeah. Something happened to Lot's wife, and she just said, when he's coming back, it's going to happen before he comes. And he put it this way. Remember Lot's wife. Yes. The question, what, what about Lot's wife? What about his wife? You didn't know her name except it was Lot's wife. What about her? How tall was she? <clears throat> How ugly was she? How pretty was she? Hello? Was she a good cook or a bad cook? Is that what he wanted you have on her bio? No. No. He wants you to know that she was saved and she unsaved herself. In other words, Lot's wife become the symbolism of backsliding. She stopped and looked back. Yes, she did. Huh? For whatever reason, he didn't care. He said, don't look back. And she did and she perished. What the Lord is saying, people of God, 
I'm coming. Yes. Like I told you. Yes. You are not to be involved Amen. in looking back. Amen. Let me give you an example. David was supposed to destroy Shimei and told Shimei, don't cross that boundary. Don't go there. Don't go there. And many a year went by and Shimei forgot. And Shimei, <laughs> and something ran away from Shimei and he chased it. Right. You know what he did? He chased it back to the place it should not go. And word came to Solomon. You know what happened to him? He died. He died. Why? Because he went back. And the Lord said, do not forget this girl called Lot's wife. Let's worship God. So I'm trying to tell you that he will not be merciful to the backslider. Right. She did not obtain not one cup more of grace or mercy. Right. Grace visited her in Sodom. Right. Grace came to her and told her, foretold her what God is about to accomplish. Yes. And said, now girl, you have found grace in the eyes of God. Right. Your neighbor did not. Yes. Those mob out there didn't, but you got it. Yes. Respect yes. the grace of God. Yes. Do not play with it. Because yes. what you have, they don't have. Yes. And I believe the angel grabbed her by the hand and grabbed me by the hand and ran across the city with them yes. and dumped them outside from judgment to a place of justice and mercy. Yes. And he said, all I'm asking you to do, don't look back. Yes. Remember, you choose the best. It's the habit of Lot and his family to look back. The Bible said that they were in chapter 15, and there was a war going on, and they captured Lot. And they captured Lot and his family. They were in captivity. And words came to Abraham that Lot is going into captivity. And Abraham took some men and went and put his life on the line and retrieved them. Why did God pull them out of the fire and the furnace of destruction? Because he was merciful to them. Yes. And the Bible said, they had a choice to make. Go back to Sodom or go back with Abraham. You know what they did? Went right back to Sodom. The Bible said, they that came out, if they were mindful of where they came out, they would have had opportunity to go back. Yes. I'm going to tell you, church, I don't need opportunity. Yes. My mind is made up. I'm saying like Ruth, entreat me not to go back. I'm not Arthur. My mind is made up. Moab is not my home. Jerusalem is my resting place. That's where I'm going. I'm not a backslider. I'm a forward rider. I'm going forward until I enter behind the party gate. Church, 
I've got a message for you. Yes, Jesus. Don't accept Satan opportunity yeah. that he offers Come you. On. You're too close. Your mind is made up. Heaven is in view. Yeah. I can see you in the light of that city. Yeah. It's just about a homecoming time. Yeah. This is not the time to back off. Right. It's time to get them up to Jesus. Yeah. It's time to embrace him. Yeah. It's time to look forward. Yeah. Because the Lord said that any man put his hand to the plow. Yeah. Amen. And pull back. I have no pleasure in him. Yeah. And the Bible says we are not of them that draw back and draw back into perdition. Let me tell you what perdition is. That's where Judas is. That's where the Antichrist is going. What on earth should a child of God be found in, per in perdition? You're going to, to go to paradise. That's where we're going. Paradise, not perdition. But if you draw back, you're going back into perdition. This is not the time to slack off with God. It's not the time to fall away. It's not the time to depart from the faith. It's not the time to forsake the house of God. It's not the time to turn away your ears from the truth. You need more than just a fall of godliness. You need to be on fire for God. You need to be anointed for God. You need to be stirred in the spirit. It's time to change your ways and put on the wedding garment. And put on the garment of, of the past. And put on the new garment. Come on, church. It's time to smarten up and say, I've gone through Jesus. I'll pay the price no matter what others do. Amen. Remember lost one. Thank you, Jesus. She represents the epitome of backsliding. I do not believe. Anyone in the scripture you find one saved, always saved. I'm going to prove to you that backsliding is a dangerous thing. It's the most dangerous threat in our churches. More than any other sin in the Bible. Backsliding is worse than adultery. Backsliding is a summary code. In the book of Hebrews, Paul wrote to the Hebrew saints. I'm going to walk you very quickly through some scriptures. You do well to check it out because time will allow me to do it. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 to 3, Paul has the rhetorical question. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? In other words, there's no way that lost wife should escape when she looked back. Yes. Amen. Amen. What more salvation could she need than an angel coming to your house? Right in your bedroom. Mm. Talk to you. Grab you by the hand. And pull you out church. We know too much to be lost. Hallelujah. The Bible says if you're lost. It's better you had not known the truth. But after you've known the truth. Gone back yes. to perdition. Hallelujah. I'm not going to join Judas. Yes. I'm not going to join the Antichrist. Hallelujah. I'm looking for the Christ. Hallelujah. I'm following him. I'm going up to him. Who went outside the gates. I'm following Jesus Christ. The author and the finish of my race. My eyes are on him. I'm not going back. I see backsliding as a threat. And I can't afford to let my foot slide. Chapter 2, Lord to 3 says, No escape for us if we neglect so great salvation. Chapter 3 of the book of Hebrews and verse 750. Remember now. He's writing to save people. Mm -hmm. So for the pastor, we're saved. Why are you telling us all this? Because the Bible does. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Chapter 3, verse 1, verse 7 to 15 says, Amen. Let us not provoke him as Israel did, that we may be kind of the world to enter into his rest. The rest being the Holy Ghost. Because this is the rest where the weary may cause the what? Amen. To be rest. Yes. Hallelujah. The rest of Christ mean into the, the seventh day and eternity with Jesus. Anybody who's not saved will never, never live in this part of eternity. You cannot get there. And he said the only way you can get into this eternity here, you've got to overcome, hallelujah, here and never have to go through this. Amen. Read it. But it's in Israel. 
two and a half million people came out of Egypt and turned back in their hearts towards Egypt and they grabbed the salvation when they crossed through the Red Sea, right. when they crossed through the baptism of the clouds, yes. when they had the holy man had given to them, they looked back and desired the leeks and the garlics, yeah. uh, ignore the heavenly yeah. man, yeah. and said, we want the flesh of Egypt. Yes. And God said, you're going to go back, you're going to die in the wilderness. Yes. I want to tell you, church, uh, don't plan to die Come in on. this present world. Yeah. Whether you die in Christ, you live again. If you live for self, you die in vain. Yeah. I'm trying to tell somebody, we are not among the backsliders. We're not drifting from truth. We're moving on to truth. We're not letting go of our steadfastness. We're hanging on to it. We're grabbing on to it. We're holding on to the fort until Jesus. We're holding the fort because he's coming. And I can see him sing along. Hold on, my people. Hold on to truth. Don't cast your faith overboard. Ain't no shipwreck. It's time to hold on. Provoke him to anger, so he locked out to the rest. Chapter 3 and verse 6 and 19 said, Some couldn't enter in because of unbelief. Church, don't throw faith overboard. You will go shipwreck. It says Ephraim had all the weaponry of war, but he did not use it. He chose to throw it away. Amen. And went back, and God abhorred him. Read chapter 78 of Psalm in chapter 4 of Hebrew. Verse 1 to 2, it says there, they did not profit from preaching. I want to ask the church, is this benefiting you right now? God chose oh, preaching to save them that believe. So most of you can stay home and just read their Bible and be saved. No, they are backsliders no, no. because they forsook the word of God. Oh, God says together, they gathered together unto him. If there was no gathering unto him, there would have been no Pentecost. Pentecost was a gathering together unto him. And the rapture would be a gathering together to him. And I can't afford to forsake the seven together because I want to profit from preaching. Yeah. He warned them again. He was chapter 4 and verse 11 to 13. They fall short. You don't want to come short. I was at the airport, my wife and I, and we wanted to come her one day earlier. And we went and we said, hey, now, can we, can we go? She said, no, the gate is already closed. I said, but look, man, you got half an hour. She said, no. We close the gate at four to five minutes. And once it's closed, nobody comes in. Honey, when God shut the door, those dumb, foolish virgins who ran out of oil, they're not going to get in. You understand that? They're not going to get in. They can knock all they want to, but they're not going to get in because Jesus said, you've had your chance and you've run out of opportunity. I'll tell you why they run out of oil. They're backslidden. They forgot to maintain what God obtained for them. They forgot to take care of their lamps and their garments. What's spotted? They were not ready for the coming of the Lord. And God loved them out. I'm trying to tell you, church, it's a horrible thing to be locked up by God. It's a horrible thing to be locked in the ark of God and to be shut out, my friend. Make your calling and let it short. You know how? By praying in the Holy Ghost. By staying full, full of the Holy Ghost. Pray without ceasing. Pray night and day. So much the Lord. And you see the day approaching. And you wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and such Church, it's time to shake yourself. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6, 1 to 5. He said it would be impossible to renew some backsliders once they have fallen away. Hello. He said it will be impossible. I didn't make it up. God said it's impossible. Don't you ever cross that line? Right. Hallelujah. Where God says, sorry, you crucify him a second time. That was not biblical. That's carnal crucifixion. It will cost you everything in God. Hebrews chapter 9. It said in verse 27, 28. It said, after death comes judgment. I want to tell you, friend, every person who died, if you are a child of God, 
When you die, my friend, it's not your sin that follow you. It's your works of Christ. It's the good deed that follow you. But if you're lost in backslidden state and you die in that state of backslidden until it follow you, your sins meet you at the judgment seat. But I know this God, he pressured his wife so much until her sister told her, quit church and it will all stop. And it did stop for a while because he lost her. And she was in the world, but that's how she died. She died in her sins. The Bible says, amen, if the righteous turn from his righteousness and commit sin and does not repent, he shall die in his sins. And all his righteousness that he committed shall be forgotten. And all seem to remember with his sin. I'm trying to take church. Don't mess around with the graveyard. Stay in the sanctuary and keep out of the cemetery. Watch God bury your sin. Lift it up again. Let it stay dead. Yes. Let the fossil stay there. Yeah. Let it be forgotten. Don't go back to the corpse, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Stay with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 The way of the backslider is hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. Hard, hard. It's impossible. If there wants to be enlightenment, they fall away. We can't renew them. Can you imagine at the altar praying and you can't find him. repentance? I had a cousin who died that way, begging God. Two of them died that way, begging God all the way out. Boxland left God and perish in their folly. After death comes judgment, the 10th chapter, and verse 25, 21, again his warning. The Hebrew church, if we sin willfully, church, you and I know what sin is. Sin is the transgression of the laws of God. I don't care what political correctness churches want to have. I don't care how many versions of perversion they bring in the churches. Thy word, of God, is forever settled in heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see God. Follow peace and holiness. If you're not holy, you cannot see God. It doesn't matter what your culture says or your custom says. It doesn't matter what your style says. God says you can't see God. But the pure in heart shall see God. And the peacemaker shall be called the children of God. I'll tell you, God put a seal among us. He knows that they're his. And God said, I'm not confused by the profession, the flattery of the tongues of men. Naming our angels are fallen. He knows that there is. God put a seal on them. There's something about God's people. They know him. And he knows them. Amen. Hallelujah. Is unfaithfulness to God. Backsliding is unfaithful to prayer. It's unfaithful to the faith. It's high commitment. It's a weakening of the relationship between men and God. Chapter 10 and verse 37, 39 says that if we draw back into perdition, he has no pleasure in us. The sad part is God made reference to a guy called Esau. Every backslider is an Esau. I'll tell you what they're doing. They're selling out cheap their birthright for temporary relief. Amen. From a challenge of needs. Think about it. Esau, for a lousy bowl of soup, a lousy bowl of soup, for you it might be a job. It might be a wife or a husband. It might be a mud. I don't know what it might be, but whatever it is, it's thrown down from Esau. In a moment of weakness, he entered into a lifetime of regret. He made a, a tremendous commitment that was foolish. He sold his birthright for a lousy pot of soup. And God watched him as he did it. Do you know the most wicked people in the world today came from Esau? Do you know the Amalekites are linked to Esau? Do you know their family? The most hated people of Pentecost are backsliders. Backsliders can't stand those who stay in the church. Backsliders will badmouth the church, badmouth the preacher. 
But about the very thing that one time they confess. Yes. Now they step on it. They spit on it. They despise it. They suck like Judas as if it was nothing. And kissing the thing. Hey, Jesus. But all the time that means hell for Jesus. Think about it. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, friends, your friend want to buy your birthright. Just like they have tried to buy our vineyard. Yes. Try to give you a better vineyard. Friend, there's no better life than Christianity. Right. right. Amen. Amen. If you think you've got trials, wait till you come to the great tribulation. Amen. Wait till you reach the apocalypse yes. horses. Wait until you reach the shining of Jordan. And you see what it's like. And there's no comforter. And there's no shield. And there's no protection. What will you do without Jesus? All right. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. He sold it. Hallelujah. And Jacob yes. took it from him. Walked right. off with it. One day I used to come to this church. I had to do all I could. <laughs> even have him find the job, even pay his rent. The first job he got, <laughs> the Friday came, somebody saw him. Is he going to church tonight? He said, oh no, I've got some better ideas. Oh, Jesus. By midnight, the landlord was crying for me. He didn't know my number. I said, I thought he was a Christian. Oh. Smeared our name and our character and our reputation. I thought he was a Christian. He tried to get down to pass back because the person to lock up in their room was scared of him and his drunken mob, vomiting everywhere. Like a dog. Amen. And so the phone rang. And he tried to tell me, Terry, give me the money. I said, no. I said, you, you betrayed Jesus and me. They still you know wants to fight me. Oh, Jesus. But the worst part was the sympathizing in our church. Oh, come on. Who said, what did Pastor Neil do to so and so? Mm -hmm. I thought, you reprobate. Oh, my. Come on. I want to tell you, they can't go to heaven. Because he's going to hell. And there'll be the reason why he goes to hell. If you help somebody to go to hell, you're going to go there too. That's right. Come on, my friend. Right. Yes. Amen. You're not going to go to heaven. You're going to heaven. No way. It's not going to work. Hallelujah. I was in church one day preaching across the road. And a friend of him required, said, I want to go to that church. He came. And I was showing him his friend, the one to see God, not to be saved. I want to tell you, the best friend you have is Jesus. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 He called me a false prophet on my pulpit and said, don't believe what he says. Oh, Jesus. The word of the Lord came and told him I was going to die. That's exactly how he died. He died with a rope around his neck full of drugs and died like a dog in a kennel. You don't play with God. Amen. You don't play with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You don't play with the Word of God. Right. It's a fearful thing yes. to fall in the hands of an angry God. Amen. But it's a great thing to have a merciful God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I found out He'll be to me whatever I want to be. Yes. If I want to know the healer, He'll be my healer. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I want to be my Savior, be my Savior. Yes. Amen. Amen. He couldn't find it. He carefully prayed at the altar. This guy, other guy, he couldn't find repentance. He died leaving this world begging God and couldn't find it. He fell in the trap of the 12th chapter of Hebrews, 14 to 17. I don't know how you pray. When I pray like they know oh God, take now thy Holy Spirit from me. And God, what do we do? God, create within me a, a clean heart, oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. God, keep my feet from slipping and sliding. Keep my mouth from saying,
make vile things. Oh God, don't let me touch holy things. Don't let me defile my garments. Get the wrinkles out of my life, Jesus. Whatever you got to do, God, but don't take that spirit from me. Because, friends, Samson one time went back one time too many. And that girl he hanging around, she cut him off from God. She cut off his hair, cut off his anointing. I want to tell you, church, the thing that we hang around can cut us off from God. You're not careful. Saul would not kill the Amalekites. He tried to lie to Samuel and lie about God. We you know how he died? Standing on his stomach was an Amalekite with his head beheaded. Holding up his head. When a bear catch a captive, you know what he does? He goes on that thing. And shrooms up. This is mine. I've captured him. And the devil made a trophy of the head of the man that would not kill that thing. There's some things in our life, folks. Before Jesus Christ come, we better kill it before it separates us from Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 12 says, the horror of backsliding. Couldn't find no place. Then the 13th chapter of Hebrews 7 and 17. It said, look, church, it's warning backsliding. It's not talking to sinners. We're talking to safe people. Paul didn't write to sinners. I don't know how some men leave a certain part of the Bible and, and preach on the good part on this, in their eyes. Hey, my, my coin got two sides, my friend. Got two sides, my friend. Hello. Grace and law. You can't have one without the other. Come on, come on. Parents, you know, you can always pat kid on the back. Some tiger to pat cake their bottom. Yes. Yes. Uh, come on now. Because yes. if you don't love them, you won't whip them. Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Hebrews 13, 7, 17, you don't want to have an unprofitable testimony to God about you. I think of the Thessalonians, Paul says, you are my crown of rejoicing. Saints of God, if you've got children, don't you love to see the graduation of the review of the stand with their citation in their hands? Right, yes. You don't want to see your kid in skin, bro. No, but with a sad state, when the Bible said that Abraham heard his son and said, Daddy, come and help me. And Daddy said, I can't help you. You're in the wrong place. And then the words came back, they have Abraham. I mean, the, the prophets of Moses. God never leave himself without a witness. Galatians chapter, I mean chapter 1 and verse 8 to 13. Our summer there it says, in fact chapter 8, I'm listening, it's chapter 8, that they have fallen from what? Grace. I want to tell you, church, there are false prophets. I, I've seen them come to my parents' home long before I got saved. I watched them come to my parents' home every night, every day. Trying to get them to turn from oneness to all kind of doctrine. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I'm glad my prayer was far not to go that way. Hello? Mm -hmm. I mean, that they clean your teeth for you just to get, to get you in their religion. <laughs> they cut your toenails for you just to get you in their religion. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing is, you can become a demon. Yes. Having loved this present world. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The devil will meet any price the church will give him. To take over. But the Bible said, give no place to the devil. When he comes in, he brings all his dirty friends with him. A lot of churches are not ready to meet God. We have got to be ready. Yes. Amen. Yes. The Galatian church, Paul said, you didn't run well. What did hinder you? You have fallen from grace. Why? They've gone back to the weak and the beggarly element. I'm trying to tell you, church, God is against anybody going backwards. Yes. Amen. That's why the man called Elisha burned 
everything he had, mm -hmm. that he would not have no reason to go back yes. on the commitment that he felt when the mantle of God touched him. Can you say that? Second yeah. Peter chapter 2, go there. Verse 4 to 8, it talks about the history of the fall of angels, the fall of Israel, and a whole long list. And why is he telling me that? Now, some church, you know, I, I had to debate on Friday. I wanted to show you what I showed you. And God spoke to my heart. And said, whether you're sure of or not, we don't have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I wanted to teach sex education in our church. Oh, come on. We were in a public school, a private school. And I watched the parents and they rose up against me. And wouldn't let me teach it. For a godly way. And they allowed the world to teach them kids. Oh, yeah. And they didn't oppose it. And they also teach their kids without any proper balance in the scripture. Yes. And I don't want to tell you the rest of the story. But all I know, my heart cries for those poor kids. Because they're not there for God. And they're not morally sound. And they're messed up. Hallelujah. Oh, think about it. Hallelujah. I don't know why Lot didn't take good care of his children. But I want thing I know that it came Moabites and Ammonites. Mm -hmm. And they never recover God. And look in Psalm 83. Look what they're doing to the people of God. The worst haters of truth is not sinners. Is backsliders. Half Christians. Half brothers. Half sisters. Look at the Bible. Christian cousins. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe it? Look who's causing Israel a problem today. They got linked to Abraham. I said they got linked to Abraham. Yes, amen. And they're the worst haters of Israel. Oh, yes. And hate the covenant. Right. Yes. Jude 1 and verse 5 to 8. Jude said, Are we content for the faith? Are we content for the faith? Hallelujah, church. Church. I'm glad we're not muscled. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Kids. Be thankful your parents are not muzzled. All right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. They can call black, black, white, white. Hallelujah. And don't give me no indeterminate gray. Hallelujah. I wish to God the church is cracked. It's a pastor. Show me the right way. Yeah. Woo! Preacher. Show me my sin. Tell me when I'm wrong. Tell me how to repent. Preacher. Don't hold back the rain. Show me. go back to my past. I don't want to go into the future, God. Yes, hallelujah. Don't send me back. Lord, I'm running. I want to be hindered. I don't want to be like Lot's wife. I don't want to be an orphan. This crime but never change. Church, a lot of churches have tears, but no change. I said lots of tears, but no change. Nobody can cry more than Esau did. Esau offered strong crying, but he never changed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Jesus. I had no idea how vulnerable I was without looking for God. 
I look back now with Thanksgiving, I could be messed up in church. Because I really wanted truth. But I didn't know what truth is. And there's a Ruth. I don't know why Naomi is doing this to Ruth. She wants to come to church. And Naomi's saying, go back. Go back. That person there to go back, they'll love you. They don't love you. All right. Come on, somebody. Yes. That was wrong advice she was giving to that girl. Mm. It was the wrong advice. Yes. Go back. The girl wanted to abandon her past. Mm -hmm. And want a bright future. Mm -hmm. You were telling her, go back. And she said, no, no, don't do that to me. Mm -hmm. I want you, God. Yes. Yes. I want to know what it's about. Oh, yeah. Hey, church, yes. don't go cry on your job about your standards yes. and your holiness living. Yes. Don't do it. Yes. Don't find fault with it Ooh. in the eyes of sinners. Hallelujah. Thank God for it. Yes. Lift it up. Yes. Proclaim it. Yes. Live it. Yes. When the doctor make a mistake, <laughs> he put you in an early grave. Yes. Come on. When the preacher does, oh, he put you in a long eternity. Yes. He had a fire, brimstone and burning. Yes. By God, the preacher, when the preach right, oh, we know what he's talking about. The deacon, the deep right, the evangelist, the evangelist right. Oh, come on, church. Yes. as close as I can. I said, well, one minute, how do you get out? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how do you get out before I go in. <laughs> I'm not going down that hole. <laughs> I want out. He said, come look at the demon. He said, no, it's not the demon. I stand back. Lest the earth move and I slip right into it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Call me a coward all you want to. Yes. But I'm a coward, all right. But I'm not going down that ditch. Right. So I'm not going that ditch. Hallelujah. Israel went back in her heart to Egypt, and ten guys make two and a half million people go to hell. That's right. I want to tell you folks something here. I have never tell another man's saint that what that guy's preaching to her is not good enough. You know what? It's like me being taken pills. You know what? I was in the states and had a concern and. Uh, I went to the clinic place, and that woman said, I ain't going to see you, no way. She said, I like I'll let my, I'll let my, rep, my, reputa my reputation, all right? Because she didn't want to give me any pills, and I have reacted to it. Yeah. Yes. Every sermon have a reaction. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. That's why it's wrong for a preacher to get on the phone. And talk to British Columbians and some saint in another church. That's right. That's right. I won't do it. Absolutely not. No way. Because I won't be around to see the reaction. I come to a close. Peter described, not me, Peter did, the chief apostle, described back shining as a pig going back to the now, in Canada, this is strange. Canada is very, Canada is very strange. They, they make pets out of pig, not us. We put pigs on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> we don't kiss pigs, we chew pigs. <laughs> not my pet. <laughs> no. <laughs> not my 
not going to dress a little pig except put an apple in his mouth and eat him. Hallelujah. But Peter says, the pig, go, or, go back down in the shop in the mud, and the dog in the vomit. Yeah. Understand? Now, church, I don't think any backside ships have a pig going back in the mud. I don't think any backside see himself. Come on, church. As a dog going back to their vomit. I've seen dogs eat their vomit. I've seen dogs eat their own puppy. Yuck. Dogs are very nasty. Now in the Caribbean, dogs don't go in our bed. We will kick them out. <laughs> they may go to your bed. Or they go to a hotel house. Which dog was in my bed? <laughs> I want another room. I don't want a roommate call. <laughs> the only hair in my bed is my wife's hair. No other hair besides that one. I guess I'm the only one you can this fine. Go ahead. Let's clear your dog if you want to. Come on, somebody. What a dog path. God said, I'm not fit for the kingdom. If I rebel, God told me. When I destroy it, because I'm a transgressor. Mm -hmm. You know, e e e even my clothes, church, I don't mind telling you, some things are not wrong, it's not sin, but one day when I came to church, I was preaching conviction and a commitment, and I can't change it. Mm -hmm. It just etched in me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be wishy-washy. Yeah. I want to be firm in God. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to be a Galatian. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I, what I put off, I want to put back on. Right. Hello, somebody. Right. Amen. Yeah. I'm not going backward with Arthur. I'm going forward with Ruth. Yeah. Let's take the worship God right now. Can somebody say, Preacher, Preacher. I'm not a quitter. I'm not, a quitter. Yeah. I'm not, a quitter. I'm not almost persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. I'm, fully persuaded. I'm going to heaven. Yeah. I'm, going to heaven. Yeah. I'm not going to spend my time with the devil in hell. Yeah. I don't mind telling you, sin has fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, the Lord Father lying. Right. I had fun in sin, mm -hmm. but only for a season. That's right. That's right. But at His wrath in God, yeah. there are pleasures forevermore. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say to you today, church. Be like a bumblebee. Somebody say you shouldn't fly. But they forgot to tell him that. He flies anyhow. And I'm going to fly whether they like it or not. I'm going to tell you church. Forward still. It's Jehovah's will. Though the middles toss and spray. With a conqueror's thread. I'll move ahead. And carry on in the name of Jesus. are holier than thou. I'm going to endure to the end. Yes. I'm not a quitter. I'm a winner. Come and say amen. 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 Now, Hallelujah. the only far back I'll go is this song, and that's not progress. Take me back. <laughs> but I can't go where God took me because the building is sold. <laughs> I'm gonna confess to you. I'm not happy about my past. Mm -hmm. I wish I could relive it. Amen. Amen. And I'm sure my wife wouldn't marry me in my past. And my past is none of her business. I will not confess to you because Jesus Christ is Lord. But if He can forget my past, I can too. Yes, He can. If He can bear it, I can too. Yes. And I'm going to walk around like a king's son. Yes. Amen. Church, I don't know about you. All I have 
to hope for is one day have my name in the Latin book of life. Yes. Church is shocking. I wish every preacher would read this and they don't. I'm going to tell you right now. Listen to me. Write it down. If we can do five, God told one church, I'm going to move your candlestick. Yes. Huh? Verse 16, he told one church, I'm going to fight against you. You want God to fight against us? The top church? You just, just put the breed alone and destroy us. Chapter 2 and verse 30, 23. He said, when the kill the converts, can anybody not come here and sling all of you guys? <sighs> Chapter 3 verse 5. You told one church, I'm going to blot your names out. Sorry. Until I see it, you made me sick. I want to vomit. Can you imagine God want to vomit? Do you want to vomit out the church? Seven churches and only two, two will make it. One guy came to our church one day. We were most vulnerable, just my wife and I. I'll never forget it. He looked at me and said, I just have a preacher like this. I didn't know he was coming. So I didn't prepare my sermon for him. To my wife. I don't know why she needs to hear that. I was preaching to her. All there was an empty views. <laughs> but I learned to preach as the world places full of people, right? Right. Hoping they'll come in. One time they did come and said, it's private. I said, no, come on in. Do you remember that he told, told me? He said, that's why you're small. You will always be small. And you'll always only have your wife alone to preach to. And we're going to berate me. You can just be going, oh, 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 no. Amen. I had more people later on than Noah had on the ark. That's right. Amen. You can't find one convert that Elijah ever had. You keep preaching that you will never build a church with me. One guy said to me, we went to home, we're teaching at home in McMurray. They're probably still here. Very professional people. The guy was caught on. She didn't, she didn't like what I was saying. And she tried to stop me and he said, talk on. So the next time I met him, he says, I got a new job. I said, where are you working? She said, in the bar. Oh. I said, whoa. Nice. Interesting. I didn't say grace, it's interesting. I said, well, you know, I started teaching about the family. You need to get married before you do certain things. So, oh, talk about that. She said, no. He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I found out we're living with a the sanctity of marriage. I didn't know that. He was teaching. They said, after the Sunday school, I said, he said, even though the pastor know that, he said, oh, the pastor said it doesn't matter. He said, since you, you plan to get married, it's okay. But if you plan to get married, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be okay. I said, he knows all that? You're in the bar, do that? You don't know that? He said, it's okay. He told me it's okay. The last time you see him, I said, now, you said I need to do this to go to heaven. And he can always have my lies that, I can do a whole lot less than see go to heaven down there. Right. And I thought, well, well, if I were you, it's Walmart or <laughs> Army and Navy, go ahead. <laughs> Choose one. <laughs> but I don't know one thing. Anything about the brick, please don't try to drive a nail in it. <laughs> I can't break her me. I can prove it to them if they want to show it. You keep by, put a nail in the brick house. 
That will be the Alpha and Omega. <laughs> it will not last. Come on, God, look at that. Man. I want to buy something that can put a name in a short place. Yes. And they all be right there, and, and they couldn't take it no more. So one day I sat in the restaurant, and the guy, left, and the guy came over and sat with me. He said, I'm leaving town. I'm leaving town now. He said, I'm not leaving town, but I want to ask you a question. He said, he said, even though we don't support you, we're going to come to your church. You still grow, and you don't pay some attention. And I thought to myself, oh. he says, hey, you're small, and and then the devil spoke to me and said, look, man, it could be God, it could be nasty, I'm going to be nasty to him, right? And I said, look, man, how many did Noah have in his heart? I was going to be sarcastic with a no. Let's tell the truth about the oneness of God. I realized he doesn't know the difference. So the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Church. If you ever find anybody back still to come to God, help them, please. Yes. Pull them out of the light. Hate to even the garment spoiled by the flesh. But the moment they start rolling the church down, drop your coffee and run for the door. Because that's Ahab talking. Yes. Ahab must say, I don't like that preacher. He never said a thing good about me. Come on, my dad, you know what I'm talking about? You got kids like that? Who said, you never said anything good about me. You love Jack more than Sue. Oh. Not true. Would you bow your head right now? Church, I'm persuaded that you love God. And I have no idea why God never preaches to you. But there are backsides all around our world, in every country, in every city. If they were faithful and loyal to God, they'd be church today. And the sad part is Jesus is coming. And they've been locked out. Not realizing his coming. They knew not when he came the first time. And they will not know the second time. If you ever think this church is too mean and too hard, go back to Calvary one more time. And pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. I told my wife, Lord, it's honey. If pastor ever die, do me a favor, honey. Find, find the meanest pastor you can find and sit on that preacher. And go there and rip your back and put you to hell. And find somebody who's not afraid of you. We'll look you in the face and tell you the truth that we might meet in heaven. Hallelujah. You don't want permissiveness. You want to stop preaching. Lord, we thank you right now. Oh, God. All you want is this church to be ready for your coming. There are earthquakes everywhere, famine and pestilence. I don't know what Noah preached, but whatever he preached, it was not popular. He was not convincing. Nobody listened to him. The flood came and they were taken away. But I hope in my city, our saints and our friends and families will not look back like Lot's wife. May we not end up like Lot in the cave and like his kids became God haters, Ammonites, and Moabites. But let's be true Israelites indeed inside of us. Oh God. I don't want to be lost from this pulpit. I don't want my wife to be lost either. God. I have no children to go to hell. So I pray for other children, Lord. I pray for other husbands and wives and family. You say, only few are going to find it, Lord. We want to be in that chosen few. And I pray for my city right now, for all the people that are being lied to by other doctrines, God. May they find their way out quick. For the coming of the Lord draws and die. I know that you're ready for us, Lord. But are we ready for you? In Jesus' name. Is there anybody here?